Good morning and afternoon. It is Wednesday, the 20th of March, 11 a.m. Eastern. Welcome all, I'm Kane, and today I'm joined with David, better known as the Workday Sharing Guy. Also joining us is Denise, the Sharing Show organizer. Welcome to the Sharing Show. Kane, can you tell me a little bit more about Zoom? Absolutely. So we're using Zoom as our platform and on the very bottom there, you should see the icon to do chat. If you have any questions during the show, please feel free to reach out to any of us here on the chat. Uh, send us your questions, anything you're seeing today that you have any questions on. Please, again, please feel free to reach out. I want to make it interactive. And uh, I think we're about ready to pass over to Denise and start our first Kahoot. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to do our opening Kahoot. If you will open your um, smart device and go to a browser and put in Kahoot.it. So we'll just have three questions this morning. There's no right or wrong answers. It's asking me for a pen. Right. We'll have the pen for you in just a second here. Okay, your pen for today for this Kahoot is 628 four six there's miss p all right let's go ahead and get started okay our first question today is which continent are you from north america europe asia or other Looks like everyone joining us today is in North America. Let's go to our next question. Counting this one, how many airings of the sharing show have you attended? This is my first. I've been to two, I've been to three, or I've attended all four. Well, we have a good variety. We have a lot of people that this is your first, but it looks like we have at least six of you that you have been here for all four. Thank you very much. Okay, which of these reporting topics are you most interested in? Dashboards, composite reports, reporting tips and tricks, or new features in reporting? Reporting tips and tricks, one took that category today, but we have a little variety in all. That's awesome to know. So thank you guys for participating. So up next, we have David, the Workday Sharing Guy. Hello, everybody. This is David, the Workday Sharing Guy. For those who haven't been to a share -a we have a fair amount of time today to review yesterday's Boomerang share -a -thon. First off, a disclaimer, I'm not currently a, an active Workday employee. Those who know Workday know that um, I am in a Workday employee in the system, not active means uh, that I left Workday. So my hire date is back in 2007. I was employee number 149. My views and views of anybody speaking today, this in no way represents Workday. This is grassroots customers. We're all customers sharing with each other. share and the sharing show are is knowledge sharing and fun. This is not training. Um, I highly recommend the Workday training. Denise, who's our first special guest? Our first special guest today is Rick from Ontario. Hey there. Good morning. Hi, Rick. So on uh, last week's session, I asked privately about the uh, Content Cloud LinkedIn Learning Integration. And it turns out there was uh, one other customer that was asking about that. So uh, with Workday 32, the, um, the Content Cloud integration with uh, LinkedIn came out. And uh, I was able to successfully launch it and bring in 7,500 courses into our sandbox tenant. So just some things to think about when you're going to do this. Uh, you do need to go to the domain setup content cloud. You need to enable your policies. Uh, you need to make sure that you go to the innovation services opt-in within Workday and opt-in for the uh, learning. And then you have to set up the learning external content integrations and add your policies in there. Once you do that, you will configure the content cloud provider and you configure in LinkedIn Learning 
And one thing that you will need is you'll need to log into your LinkedIn Learning Admin account and you will have to go and get your API, um, it's uh, client secret and your ID, and then you need to add that into Workday. Once you do that, uh, you choose a, a um, topic that they're going to come into, and then the integration runs and it'll pull all of the courses into Workday Learning. So I'm, I'm interested in speaking with other people if they want uh, to learn more about this and work more on this, uh, always open to share. Okay, Rick, what uh, we'll do is we'll encourage people to use the chat as Kane mm -hmm. had pointed out at the beginning. Um, so the chat lines are open. Um, Rick, you'll be able to use the chat. At least one person, just like you said, at least one other person said the same as you did, sent in a private message. So make sure when you send a message in the chat that you're not sending it privately, uh, make sure to send it to everybody. Any other final words of wisdom, Rick? Uh, no, I mean, right now where's that? There is, uh, I found, uh, I think is a bug um, with the new browse learning content. Uh, and I've got an open active ticket with support right now. Okay, all right. So the continued discussion, Rick, could, will go on the Sharing Show LinkedIn group, um, and there are, but I do see some comments coming in the chat. Um, so let's go ahead and move forward from here. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is a quick review for those who are watching these uh, recordings to make sure they understand the answer to previous challenge questions. The initial challenge question was, how, how do you sort on a, a modified date field if it's no longer a date and it's a text for example, month and year without the day on it, um, how would that sort? And you see in the picture on the left, it doesn't sort correctly. And the answer has come up before, um, but it's what I like to do is I like to have people when they're learning report writing to click always on the fields on report instead of trying to search. If the field that they're looking to sort or filter on, if that is on the report, use fields on report. But then it turns out this could be somewhat tricky. Um, so here's the problem is if you're looking to sort only on fields on the report, you're going to lose the actual date field. The higher date field is replaced here. Um, so it's just important for everybody to know that you do not need to sort on fields that are on the report. You could sort on any field. So you could sort on the higher date. Um, so that was a pretty straightforward forward challenge. Most people got that in the, the first challenge. This was last week's challenge now. Uh, this is a uh, you know, new question, somewhat related to the previous one. Why can't I sort, or filter for that matter, on the worker's email primary work field, which is shown down here in, in the red box, and it doesn't show up here on fields on report. These first five do, the employee ID, the legal first and last and the preferred first and last, they all show up here as fields on report. But this right here, the email primary work, it's on the worker object, but it does not show. Um, so this is um, last week's and just about everybody got this one as well. Um, I'd given some hints here that um, you cannot um, sort or filter on this field either that's on the manager level one but also this email primary home you weren't able to, to sort on. What I didn't do is give a visual last week. So this shows here, this is the self-referencing field on the PBO uh, worker. This is not a good idea. It comes up because um, sometimes people, after they put a different RBO here, like manager level one, and they're looking for the worker, they accidentally click the self-referencing worker instead of the PBO. You'll see a difference visually. This here has a self-referencing icon. The fields above it here on the worker do not. Somewhat related to this is a picture here. You see a filter tab on a report and the field here is worker type. And it looks like there's two options here, um, contingent worker and employee. You don't have to have the worker type field in your report in order to list, for example, only employees if you're using a worker um, report data source that has worker as the PBO. Thank you, David. Denise, who's our next special guest? Our next special guest is Belinda from Wisconsin. 
hello to everybody out there in North America. Uh, I uh, partnered with David to uh, to do a share yesterday, and I'm just here to talk a little bit about how that went and how it came about. So uh, how it came about first, my coworker George met up with David at a share at the last North America Rising. And George and David talked about how um, calculated fields are all, uh, something that uh, a share uh, could benefit from. So George and David organized a calculated field share And at that share I indicated that I'm interested in setting up a boomerang integration. And a boomerang integration is taking a report from Workday and having it feed back into Workday to update uh, all kinds of objects, right? Whatever objects you have web services for. And uh, at the time, that was back in uh, October, November, I hadn't set up a boomerang integration. And, and David said, that's a great topic. Tons of people do that. And it's a very interesting topic. And um, I uh, hadn't had one set up. So in the time between w when we talked about it and yesterday, I set up a boomerang integration and it was pretty challenging because I'm a new person to integration. And so what, yes, and here's, here's a slide about um, what really helped me in the spirit of sharing and community. I found this great post on um, community and this studio integration totally saved the day for me. It is a um, inbound uh, integration that calls a web search. And so what I ended up doing was creating a, a custom report. Here's my use case. I wanted a, a date set for only our faculty members um, here at the place that I work. And uh, I wanted that done automatically. So based on the hire event, take that hire date, add some years to it based on conditions, and take that date and update a custom object. That's, that was what I wanted to do, and I did accomplish that with this um, configurable boomerang. So the great thing about the share is that everybody got to ask questions, and the even better thing is we had a special guest from Workday um, to start us out, give a conceptual overview of what a boomerang integration is. So this was the one that I came up with based on the community suggestion. Um, the outbound, Integration is a custom report with a calculated field that calculates my date. It goes through an XSLT transformation that turns it into a SOAP call. Uh, and then that SOAP call goes to the web service requester, which is a contributed solution, um, which actually updates Workday. So no files in this boomerang setup leave Workday. It's all passed within the integration system. And here's a screenshot from the configuration. Uh, you see we've got a transformation. That was very challenging for me as a newbie, and I have details about that in community. And then if the, if the business process then takes this outbound boomerang and then loops in that inbound as a second step in this integration system. So that's the solution I came up with. I got a lot of help from the community. And I'm really appreciative of it. Uh, and, uh, you know, any questions, I'm open if you want to talk about what the boomerang is or how, uh, how, how I set this up. That's something I'm totally open to. And thank you to David for setting it all up. He is uh, really a connector of people. Thank you, Belinda. That's, yeah, it was really fun yesterday. Uh, this is a condensed 30-minute show. The, the share are two and a half hours, and so it was fantastic having initial special guests, um, having you walk us through your journey, um, and showing, you know, showing us all how um, Shannon's community posts helped you. Um, so I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to summarize two and a half hours of fun in about seven minutes, um, make that maybe five minutes. So, um, so thank you, Belinda. So first, first thing we did yesterday is we had this very first uh, do-it-yourself post, the very first boomerang post. Uh, it's pr maybe too small for many people to see, but this was in 2012. And, um, you know, we heard from um, people who initially came out with boomerangs. And it turns out that you know, under a year later after that post, 
I guess, announcement to the whole Workday ecosystem. But if you take a, a look here, this was rising to 2013. This was over five years ago. So if you're just hearing about boomerangs for the first time, which I know a lot of people have been since, um, since uh, posting on community, um, it's quite powerful. And um, I'm not gonna say there's a lot to learn. The basics is, is like Belinda was saying, you, you take data out of Workday, you do something with it, and then you put it back in. Um, so there were 18 um, boomerang questions that have been posted on community that came from this, you know, from this marathon yesterday. Um, this is one of the slides from yesterday. It's showing how you trigger a boomerang. It could be just a step in your business process, but then of course it could be manually done um, or scheduled, you know, to once in the future or or daily, weekly, monthly, just like any other integration could be scheduled. The next person who shared, this is one of the benefits of, of a share is when you watch other people drive, you might, you might pick up a hint or notice something. Now, I know this is a little bit fuzzy, so I'm going to talk through it. She had a RAS report as part of her boomerang. And what somebody asked a question is, wait, what object is that? This is a PBO worker, all active and terminated workers report data source. What is, what is team member? And she pointed out that they renamed employee to be team member. Um, so then somebody asked, wait, how do you do that? So she showed this under, under maintain custom labels, go to global, and then you can change contingent workers. She didn't, but you see here on the bottom right, they um, changed the word employee to say team member. So that's why it shows up that way in the report. So that really isn't anything necessarily about boomerangs, but this is a benefit of watching other people drive. So uh, this person asked a few questions about boomerangs, but in particular, how do you handle special characters? So a lot of different languages use different accents. And it reminded me of somebody whose birthday it is today. Happy birthday, Mike. He presented at the very first um, airing of the sharing show. And he showed us his boomerang, which changes Mac and Mick, if they're all uppercase, to a mixed case. This is an example of candidate resumes that were all uppercase. Now I thought about it, if he's changing Mac and Mick, he could also handle special characters here too. Uh, this slide is showing three different people who were sharing. Uh, we're, uh, again, I'm summarizing two and a half hours, so I'm not gonna go into it, but I'm gonna point out somebody actually showed Workday Studio code, focused on it a little bit, but you don't really need to know the code, you just need to understand the use case. And you'll see, again, this person used Raz um, as part of his boomerang solution. Uh, two other people, and then this was just showing that sometimes a boomerang is, is small, but others, it's quite involved. And the comments actually turned into more about integrations instead of just boomerangs. David, what's the update on the past brainstorms? All right, that was a quick uh, review of, of the boomerang charathon from yesterday. Let's move on to these past brainstorms. Thank you, Denise. This was the very first brainstorm that, that Floyd showed, and this was initially 37 votes. And if you take a close look at the dates, you'll see on that date, February 27th, it got three more votes, moved up to 40. And then we brought this back up again, and it got another three votes. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to put on the LinkedIn group for the sharing show the links to these. But you can see the node number, 239699 if you would like to vote for Floyd's um, productivity enhancement of using a WID in the search. Last week, Floyd also showed um, a brainstorm. There's the brainstorm number 240771. And in this case, the vote went from 64 up to 74. If you look at the date, all 10 of those came last week during the sharing show, or at least on that same day. Brainstorm of the week. I'm actually going to share my brainstorm and it's because people said they couldn't make yesterday's boomerang shareathon when's the video going to come out customers are not allowed to post videos please vote for my brainstorm i put this up about three years ago the very first shareathon had about 300 people a three-day marathon remote share, um, reporting shareathon but i have all these videos and i couldn't post them so um, we're up to 164 
Again, that link will be on the LinkedIn group. Denise, what's next on our agenda? Up next on the agenda is our Workday Hack of the Week. Okay, very quickly, the Workday Hack of the Week. I was working with someone recently and I saw them clicking all five or six options every time they ran something. And they didn't know the Workday Hack 20, where you could do Control A and the, the space bar or Enter, or you could click the top one and then Shift and click on the bottom one, you, you select them all. Again, search for Workday Hack in community. So that brings us to our fun photo of the week. And I found this one online and I loved it because, well, for one, it made me laugh. And for two, uh, the way that we learn Workday and we learn so much more about it is just by doing these share and doing the sharing show. And so I love gathering together and, um, and learning more about Workday. And Logan, I particularly like this one because I feel like that's me. I will teach you work day. First, I have to find you. So for any of you who are interested in being considered for fun photo of the week, you can submit your favorite pick and we will contact you. You can submit through the LinkedIn group. Denise, do you have any more photos to share with us? I do. These are photos that I took at Rising this year of the Imagine Dragon concert. I don't know how many of you were able to attend, but it was an amazing concert. Um, and if you haven't gotten a chance to see Imagine Dragon, it is worth going to for sure. I think everyone had a great time and I got to be front row and get these great pictures. So Denise, you took those pictures, right? I did take those pictures. Wow, awesome. So on the bottom left of this slide, I'm showing that somebody else put a video up of uh, that Imagine Dragons lead singer in the middle of a song named Demons. He stops and shares with the entire group about his challenges with mental health, um, anxiety, and depression. Um, and it was very interesting. The audience was clapping. In the background, I happened to, to know this somebody named Kristen, who at one point taught a lot of people at Workday Rising about Calc Fields. Um, if I move over to this larger picture here, it's a blog from Workday destigmatizing mental health conditions in the workplace. And it was about one week after that concert, Workday uh, interviewed six of their employees all openly talking about mental health. Very interesting um, to see Workday taking the lead here. The upper left is a picture of a U2 song um, called Stuck in the Moment. And this is all related to mental health. Now, um, the fact that Workday is leading the way here with um, some focus on mental health, I, I, I believe we owe that to uh, Workday leadership. This picture is showing four women in tech from Workday. And um, these uh, four women, I'm, I'm sure, are part of uh, involvement in decisions that are made at, at Workday. Um, you see also here in this picture, Workday recently was fourth on the Fortune 100 best companies to work for. This blog is from one of those four. I highlighted in yellow the fact that Workday every week asks their employees for, for surveys, they get input. So this brings us to some Kahoot share history. So you guys may be wondering why we started doing cahoots. Um, it was an idea that David had for our sharing at the share at, at Rising this year. Um, you can see in that picture, there's a big group of us. And that was the first time we did cahoots and everyone really enjoyed it. And it was a great icebreaker. So that's kind of why we have continued it. This picture shows us doing the final cahoot right before um, the beginning of Rising, all of us in our tie-dyed shirts. and. Um, doing our final Kahoot there for our prize. So let's get ready for the, this is gonna be a longer quiz Kahoot. It'll be challenging for some people. This is a reminder of last week's um, prep. And it shows here that there were six Logans in that picture. So I go back and forth a little bit so that you can see that. Now this is this week's prep. Take a quick look at this picture and we're ready to get the Kahoot started. Okay, here we go on our Kahoot. There is right and wrong answers on this Kahoot. So our pin for this Kahoot will be 773633. And again, go to your browser and you can just go to kahoot.it 
on your browser and join us. We'll start here in a minute. All right, here is the first question. When is it appropriate to use self-referencing fields of the PBO in a report as the business object? To help with sorting, to help with filtering, to help with both sorting and filtering, or never? Never is the correct answer on that. 19 of you got that one right? Let's see who's in the lead is LPB. And then Jen and, and then Teresa. Let's go to the next question. This report filter picture shows what truth? Only employees will come out. Only contingent workers will come out. Worker type must be either employee or contingent worker, or this tenant has no worker in it. Most people got this one correct. The worker type must be either employee or contingent worker. Nice job. So we have a new leader. So let's see what happens after the next question. This boomerang picture shows what truth. Outbound EIB uses RAS. Outbound EIB uses a contributed solution. Inbound is optional on a boomerang. Outbound is optional on a boomerang. Uh oh, I think we may have uh, lied on that one. David, what's the real answer? Uh, a, right, A, <laughs> sorry, outbound. So, okay, those who did blue, you got lucky. That wasn't the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> so Michael's in the lead right now. So let's do the next question. This boomerang picture shows what truth. A RAS can be used for inbound. A BP step can be used as a trigger. Workday Studio is used only for inbound or boomerangs cannot be triggered. A BP step can be used as a trigger. So 12 of you got that one right. Michael's still in the lead. This picture shows four women who founded Oracle, founded Workday, all have chiefs as the first word in their title, or all report to Logan. They do all have chiefs in their title. Michael's still leading. Dave and Anil started Workday, making notes on a People magazine while skiing in the San Francisco Bay Area or in 2005. Okay, Michael, did we stump you? <laughs> In 2005 is the correct answer. We did not stump Michael. He took a big lead there. And then Anthony's in second and Joe was in third. Thanks everyone for playing along with us. For those who thought we were counting Logans, there were five Logans in that picture, but we did not do a count the Logans question in that cahoot. Okay, Kane, we are, we are wrapped.
Excellent. Thank you, everybody. That has been a great show. And this show will be pushed over to YouTube later today. Uh, again, once again, great show. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Please head over to YouTube, subscribe, get notifications, and we will see you this time next week. Everybody have a great workday.